Uh, a lot of people nowadays are afraid of GMOs. Are GMOs dangerous for your health? No. Like, not at all, not even a little? No. Also, uh, the pesticides, aren't they like dangerous for you? No. Most of them are actually herbicides, so they're not dangerous for any animal at all. And pretty much everything that is used in agriculture is harmless. Like, like, like really, there is one type of pesticides that is dangerous, but it's not used anywhere near food. Uh, it's the pesticide that is used for lawns. You know, grass. If you have a, a one of those manicured lawns, then you are harming the environment because the, the pesticides that are needed to grow uh, good uh, uh, bluegrass, you know, uh, uh, and a real uh, pretty lawn, that are um, those are really dangerous. Uh, there's been actually in some uh, m my version of hell the uh, American suburbs, you know? Uh, when I watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer, that was the scariest monster of them all. Not the vampires, not the demons, but the place where she lived. That that was the really scary thing for me. <laughs> it looks like absolute hell. And it is one of the most polluted places on Earth. Not especially the village where she lived, because that's a fictional place, but... Uh, all these, you know, American suburbs with the with the scary houses that looks uh, that all look like like each other, and and the, the lawns that are like really, really, uh, <laughs> really, really well maintained. The amount of pesticides in in the water in most of those places is through the roof because of the fucking lawns, and uh, also that can happen um, around golf courses. But uh, in, in in agriculture. Like, where, where people grow food? No. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's most likely fine for the bees also. While we're debunking bullshit, uh, a lot of people are thinking that the bees are disappearing. The bees are not disappearing! The bees are dying at a higher rate than before. But you know what else is as has a huge influence on demographics, there, there's two things. There's death, and there's... Yes, you guessed it, the bees are fucking like crazy. There's bees orgies all over the world. Uh, I, you think I'm joking, I am not. The number of deaths in bees is going faster, but the number of births is going up much faster. The number of bees in the world is increasing! Bees are not endangered! Stop spreading this bullshit! Yes, there is a thing called colony collapse disorder that were observed. Uh, it was observed the first time, I think, uh, 120 years ago. So it's not exactly recent, but it, it, it has accelerated in the 90s and... Uh, Yes, bees are dying faster than before, but they're also giving birth so much faster that, yes, their numbers overall in the world is going up. Thanks for listening. Let's go back to the food now. Oh, things we're talking about fucking... We're talking about fucking bees. I mean, not, we're not talking about fucking bees. This is not uh, that Jerry Seinfeld movie that we are all trying to forget about. Since we're talking about bees, bees make honey. There's a lot of, you know, talk recently about sugar. Because in the 70s, fat was the enemy. And then... Uh, that was utterly debunked and it was proven that was bullshit and some people are taking it like way too far with like the keto diet where they mainly fat now what's the enemy it's sugar everyone is hating on sugar and a lot of scoundrels are you know making big bucks on that they're making like all these alternatives to sugar like uh, Stevia that tastes like absolute fucking crap. It's disgusting. There's agave syrup, 
agave syrup, not so bad, goes well into uh, cocktails if you want to make a mojito. Uh, you can replace sugar by, by agave syrup, works pretty well in my opinion. And also there's a bunch of shit like raw honey and, and raw sugar and, and, and cane sugar and that's supposed to be better for your health than the normal sugar, you know. First, friendly reminder that most brown sugar is white sugar with brown coloring. It's not extracted differently, it's not made differently, it's actually the exact same sugar as the regular cheap white wine, white one, but with brown food coloring in it. If you're falling for this, then uh, you are not immune to propaganda, like Garfield said so well. And are any of these sugars better for your health than the plain old white sugar that we uh, get with an espresso when we are at the cafe? Or any our agave syrup? Um, uh, fucking uh, what else? I don't know. I don't know about maple syrup, but uh, agave syrup. There's there's the honey, raw honey, raw sugar, uh, stevia. Um, are any of those better for your health than plain old white sugar? And the answer is a resounding no. No, no, no. None of these sugars are better for your health. There's a claim that they have a stronger sugary taste with a smaller quantity, so you have to use less of them to have the same uh, sugary taste, so that's why they're healthier, but anyone who's tried any of them knows that it's absolute bullshit. They don't taste uh, sugarier than sugar. They taste the absolute same, or in case of fucking stevia, I hate stevia. I give me syrup, not so bad. Uh, honey, honey's nice, uh, but yeah. They're not better than sugar for your health. No, they aren't. Um, for a while, people thought that fructose was particularly harmful and toxic for the liver. But as it turns out, uh, the research was shoddy and it's not. It's just, it's the same. All sugars are basically the same for you. There's no real difference. At least, that's what science says. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, there's a thing that a lot of people are talking about recently, less now, but a few years ago it was all the rage, uh, Omega-3. Omega-3, everything was like uh, reinforced in Omega-3, the milk had extra Omega-3 in it, breakfast cereal, the eggs had extra Omega-3 in it, butter and shit, and everything for a while. Everyone was omega-3, omega-3, omega-3. The hype has kind of died down recently, and that's good, because according to science, omega-3 don't really do anything to you. Uh, there's been a shitload of studies done in a few years, and most of them have been inconclusive. Omega-3 basically doesn't, doesn't do anything special to you compared to uh, other similar fats. So you, you need fats to, to stay healthy and, and to stay alive, really, but uh, not really this one in particular. Um, there's one thing for sure, though, is that it's not harmful, it won't do you any bad, so you could just take it, but you don't have to take any supplements. Uh, just eat uh, mackerel or tuna, they're full of, they're full of it. Like, it, yeah, mackerel or tuna a couple times a week, that should cover it. Salmon also, uh, anchovies, yeah, that's it. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Oh, I want to talk about, I want to talk about the biggest scam of our times. One, one that is really grinding my gears. Organic food. Uh, organic is a scam, there's no 
two ways about it. And lately, there's so many organic food stores that are opening all over the city and shit. So much advertisement for organic bullshit all over the internet. It's become uh, ubiquitous and overwhelming. And uh, I, I just cannot fucking stand it anymore. Um, there's been so many studies, so much research done on organic food and is it better for your health no there's no difference in nutrition between organic and conventional agriculture no difference it's not more nutritious it doesn't have less bad things and also it it, it does have pesticides in it just not pesticides that are made in labs but natural pesticides that are extracted from plants and often that are more harmful for the environment or your health than the ones that have been engineered in labs to be efficient, so you use less of them and they do less harm to the environment and they do nothing to people who consume it. There's no interest in making people sick because Doing something that is harmful for life would fucking kill the vegetables you're treating with it. Think about it, you dope. And also, organic farming is way less efficient than conventional farming. Of course, because they use techniques from fucking hundreds of years ago. Because they think like life in the Middle Ages was, was better when... when 50% of people died in childbirth. So the yield is lower. So they have to use more space. And of course, they're not doing it here because it's too expensive. They're doing it in the third world where they can do whatever they fucking want. And that organic farming contributes to what? Deforestation, of course, because you need larger fields. Because the yield is so shitty, because the techniques are so antiquated and obsolete. And deforestation is bad for everyone. The, yes, that's true. Uh, if you wanted me to say deforestation is not a big deal, it fucking is. And climate change is maybe the biggest deal of our times. So uh, that also is absolutely proven by science. And if you're eating organic, you're contributing to it pretty much directly. Um, and uh, yeah, the, 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 the techniques are, are worse also for the workers. The, the working conditions in, in organic farms are often worse uh, because the techniques are from the Middle Ages and the working conditions are also kind of from the Middle Ages too. Uh, they don't have all the, the advantages of modern farming, all the, the comfort, all the, the products, the machines and all that, so uh, it's harder work. And as I said, uh, it's not really in the rich countries that it happens. Most of these products are cultivated in the third world. So yeah, you're responsible indirectly uh, to the, the exploitation of um, <laughs> poor farmers uh, around the world, a, a lot of them uh, children, and uh, a bunch of them uh, pretty much literal slaves. And uh, that is especially true if you eat um, avocados, uh, chocolate, uh, coffee, those are some of the products where the working conditions are the, the worst and the number of worker deaths are huge. Also, oh, also, it's not food. But while we're talking about organic and myths, cotton is a disaster. <laughs> it wastes so much water and the, the, oh, once again, the amount of pesticides used for it uh, because it's not a food, just like grass. So the amount is really, really high. The fields needed to uh, harvest cotton are huge, and it's one of the biggest contributors to deforestation 
and uh, a pollution and, and climate change uh, wear polyester dudes and uh, if you're wearing organic cotton you're, you're doubly uh, guilty I'm sorry to say that to you but uh, cotton is, is, is bad it's really fucking bad um, and by the way while we read it the laws defining what is organic and what is not are pretty lax when it comes to food but when it comes to anything else there's pre they are pretty much non-existent it's kind of a legal gray area so if you're buying organic cosmetics for example or organic clothing anything that's not a food you know deodorant uh toothpaste you're pretty much buying whatever companies can put whatever they fucking want in a cosmetic and call it organic there's there's no real laws surrounding this uh it's only about food so <laughs> Yeah, you are not immune to propaganda. Remember what Garfield said in that in that epic comic about propaganda and not being immune to it. Garfield always has great insight. And um he's he's right, Monday suck and lasagna is, is awesome. I mean you should always trust fucking Garfield! What else? Oh yeah, just a, a word about uh, deodorants, uh, the aluminum in your deodorants cannot harm you because aluminum doesn't really go through the skin. Uh, if you're a worker, like in a factory where people are cutting aluminum and there's aluminum dust all over the place and you breathe it, then yes, it, it, it might uh, harm your brain. It's very toxic for the neurons, but it cannot really go through your skin. Your skin is an excellent barrier really great at, at, at keeping things out and uh, yeah aluminum doesn't really get absorbed uh, through the skin so you can use whatever antiperspirant you want doesn't really matter what else let's go back to food um, there's a myth also from the 70s, the, the Dark Ages, we're going back to the hippie Dark Ages of the 70s, that says that you cannot ugh, absorb more than 150 grams of protein per day. Sometimes the number differ, sometimes it's, it's kind of more vague, and there's a reason for that. That is the, it's a fucking lie. It was probably started I'm not a fan of conspiracy theories, but it was probably started by, by the uh, cereal lobby. Oh, uh, you don't know me, I'm, I'm new here, but uh, Chad is wrong. It's, um, it's not a myth that started in the 70s, or, although it was like unearthed in the, in the 70s, but it's actually much older it comes from the uh, after the discovery of America when or European people were to like explore these new lands and try to um, start settlements over there uh, a lot of them uh, died or were like really sick because of something that some people called the the, the rabbit hunger or uh, something like that or the the reindeer famine or you know there was a lot of um, names and it uh, this disease is caused by the consumption of really lean meats like reindeer or rabbits or rodent meat uh, rodent meat has a lot of uh, muscle but almost no fat uh, and uh, you know not a lot of other things because uh, back then a lot of people who were exploring uh, the Americas had a hard time finding food so they settled for uh, what they could catch you know and you know reindeer rabbits agoutis rats um, whatever and 
these uh, meats have a, a, an issue and it's not an excess of protein, it's a lack of fats. So what is what was uh, thought as to be caused by an excess of protein was actually caused by a lack of fat. These people were uh, having had anemia, uh, a, a lack of, of fats. And you need to consume a lot of fats to stay alive and healthy. And if you if you lack fat, you're gonna die, basically. Uh, there is no such thing as protein poisoning. There is no such thing as an excess of protein. It's not possible. If you are a healthy pe person, if you're a healthy person with normally functioning kidneys, you can eat as much protein as you want. No problem. There will be zero harmful effects. Uh, the protein toxicity only occurs in people who already have kidney failure or like a really bad renal disease. Then they should try not to eat too much protein. Although they have to because if you don't eat any protein, you will absolutely die. Protein is essential for human life. Uh, but yeah, there's no such thing as protein poisoning or protein toxicity or protein overdose. Uh, if you're healthy and your kidneys are normal, you can eat as much protein as you want. There will be no harmful effects on your health. Because uh, at some point they, they tried to make people eat less meat and more grain because they wanted to sell more grain. And uh, that has been happening a lot in the United States where the grain lobbies are very powerful. And, uh, you know, they contributed to that food pyramid bullshit that I started, that I talked about earlier. Uh, there's no limit of how much protein you can eat in a day. You can eat a steak at every meal if you want. That's not really good because, you know, uh, farming beef uh, is not great for the environment. But that's a whole other debate. And, yeah. You can eat 25 eggs per day if you want. No, there's not a limit of how much protein your body can process per meal. That, that is 100% bullshit. Uh, get your protein, especially if you're like doing a lot of sports, you would probably need a, a 200 grams per day or more to, you know, feed those muscles. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, there's a lot of people who are advocates of low carb or no carb because there are no essential carbs because your body can make its own carbs out of protein and other stuff. Uh, that is true, but it's dangerous long term. Uh, it's, it's not great for your health to go uh, no carb for an extended amount of time. It cannot hurt you if you do it like for a week or maybe a month, but if you do it for a year or more, uh, then the implications could be quite serious. Uh, and, you know, if you don't want to eat too many starchy carbs because they're af you're afraid they'll make you fat, which is a possibility depending on your eating, eating habits and your activity levels, <clears throat> uh, Eat a lot of fibrous carbs, like vegetables mostly, like tomatoes uh, and uh, salad and uh, as, uh, you know what a fucking vegetable is. I don't, don't know why I'm making a list, but um, yeah, don't don't be afraid of carbs. Don't be afraid of fats. Don't be afraid of proteins. Don't be afraid of sugars. Uh, there's no enemy really in your plate. Uh, there's one, actually, there's trans fats, which are those hydrogenated oils. Uh, but if you make your own food, you won't encounter them. They're mostly in like uh, cakes that you find in supermarkets that are highly processed and, and stuff like, uh, yeah, supermarket uh, cookies and, and stuff like that. Uh, also, uh, Mar margarine, 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 forget how to pronounce it, but that is like fucking pure cancer. Don't eat that shit. Uh, it's bad. At first, at some point, people thought that butter was bad for you for no fucking reason, really. Butter's great. 
uh, and so they they try to sell you Ma margarine in say March Simpson fucking uh, and uh, no don't don't eat that that is bad that is usually full of hydrogenated um, oils uh, which are absolutely uh, bad for you which are a, a, a poison especially if you eat a lot of them um, eat plain old butter or use real oils like olive oil great for you coconut oil great uh, fuck, I don't know canola oil not so bad peanut oil is fine sunflower seed oil is, is good too uh, also also uh, there's a weird myth uh, that that's saying that grass-fed butter is, is better for you that normal butter uh, of, of course the, the butter is not fed it's the, the cows that are grass-fed uh, nutritionally grass-fed butter and regular butter are identical there is no difference between grass-fed beef and normal beef in terms of nutrition it's the same meat it's the same butter. The only difference is the price. You're you're paying the fucking Gwyneth Paltrow tax, uh, and maybe maybe I haven't found conclusive evidence about this, but some people say that when you feed grass and only grass to the cows, then they fart less and release less methane in the atmosphere so that it's better for uh, greenhouse gas emissions that may be true I don't know you're welcome to do your own research about this the grass-fed beef is not better for your health and uh, grass-fed butter is uh, it, it's the same it's the same the same molecules the same proportion the same everything basically 